I cheated. And now she is pregnant with his baby. Love and the human desire. A double-edged sword that both enriches and complicates our lives. We are capable of deeply loving one another. Yet when lust enters, some are drawn to betray the ones they love the most. So goes the story of Sophia and Henry, both bound by love, history, and a marriage of over a decade. After Sophia explored the forbidden path, it destroyed her life. She hopes to find peace in sharing her story with us. Could confessing to a twisted cheating story absolve Sophia? I let you decide. Before we start, gift the like button a cat, but don't mention it's feral. <laughs> Warning, OP is so honest and to the point, you will be triggered. <laughs> I was referred here by my sister, who thought getting opinions of people not familiar with my situation could benefit me. I'm a 31-year-old female. You can call me Sophia and my husband Henry, who is 33 years old. We've been married for 10 years and together nearly 13. We have two children, a girl aged nine and a boy aged eight. Henry is the only man I had been with prior to my affair. While Henry had three previous girlfriends prior to dating me. We had a great marriage full of love, laughter, and a blessed family. Though we had been married for a number of years, our intimacy was completely fulfilling for me. And I believe it was for Henry too. Now for the part where I ruined everything. I met a man, call him Adam, at my daughter's soccer practice. He was a parent of a six-year-old girl who was playing in the league below my daughter. He worked from home and was able to attend soccer practice and games. Initially, I spoke to him as part of a group of parents as we stood on the sidelines, watching our children. These chats led to an uncomfortable conversation where he told me he had strong feelings for me. I clearly told him I was happily married and we'd have to stop speaking. With this, he backed off. While I rebuffed his advances, for some reason I liked the attention. I know it was so wrong now, but I want to be honest here and tell you what I was feeling. Eventually, he brought his feelings up again and asked if I'd meet him for a coffee at a shop in the next town over. At first, I told him no, but then decided to meet with him, making it clear it would only be this one meeting for coffee and nothing more. I know now just talking to him was cheating and totally disrespecting my husband and family, but I couldn't stop it. At the end of our private meeting, before we left to go to our children's practice, he told me that he wanted me come to his house tomorrow at the same time. He gave a piece of paper with his home address. I said, no, I can't. But with that, he gently kissed me. And I'm ashamed to say not only did I kiss him back, I kissed him again when he pulled away. The next day we met at his house and did it. There was no talking before or build up. We just did it. As I looked around and saw photos of his beautiful wife and child, I became so upset with myself. I also started thinking about Henry and our kids and burst out crying, telling Adam I couldn't do this again. We cleaned up, got dressed, and left in our cars for practice. For the next week, I avoided Adam at soccer practice, and when I did eventually spoke to him again, I told him I didn't want to see or speak to him ever again. With this, he handed me a note with the name and address of a hotel in the same neighboring town. He said he wanted me to meet him there tomorrow at our special time, but would understand if I didn't come. I just told him, no, no, I can't, and left. That night, I stayed up all night thinking about this situation and how it would destroy my marriage and family if this ever became known. But foolishly thought it was unlikely as we never called or texted and all of our communications were verbal or via these handwritten notes. My intention was not to go, but I broke down and did. Again, as with our first meeting, it ended with me crying and telling Adam we cannot do this again. This time he agreed with me, but he added that our lovemaking was worth the risk. We parted and this time remained apart for a full month with no contact outside of brief conversations at soccer practice and at games while talking with other parents. 
What's most disturbing is that at one of the games, my husband Henry and Adam ended up talking. Not just talking, but having a deep conversation for over 20 minutes. This made me feel terrible, but in a way it excited me in some twisted way. Fast forward to my D-Day, the day my husband discovered my affair and the absolute worst day of my life. Adam and I spoke at soccer practice the day before and agreed that we can no longer meet, as we were both happily married and loved our spouses and children. However, and here's where I made a really bad mistake. We agreed to meet one final time. I know people, some of you here, are not going to believe me, but it's the truth. D-Day was to be our final time. I didn't want to meet at Adam's house as I couldn't take seeing the photos of his wife and child, so I offered to have him meet me at my home. The plan was for him to park on the adjacent street and walk over to my house, then walk up to the side door where I would let him in. It was lightly raining and no one was out on the street, so I thought he did so undetected. I took him to our home office on the second floor, which has a guest bed, and that is where we got together. I want to say I would have never done anything in our marital bed like we did at Adam's house, as I have too much love and respect for my husband. Since this was going to be our last time, there was a lot of hugging and kissing just before we really got into it. My husband Henry came into the room and stood beside the bed, recording. I don't know how long he had been there before he said, what the hell is going on here? With this, Adam and I quickly jumped up and separated, and I just started crying, telling Henry I'm sorry and could explain everything. Explain what, I don't know, but at the time, it was all I could think to say. I don't know what got into Adam, but he completely panicked and tried to rush past Henry, who was blocking the door. Henry is over six foot and weighs nearly 230, while Adam is about five foot 10 and weighs about 160. So he bounced off Henry, falling back to the floor. He got up again and attempted to charge at Henry, but this time Henry stepped forward and pushed him back hard. The push sent Adam lying back, where he hit one of the window screens and fell backwards out the window, landing on a large bush we have in front of the house. He had no clothes on. I cried and begged Henry to stop as he was going to hurt Adam, and I didn't want him, Henry, to get in trouble. With this, Henry just gave me a mean look and ran down the stairs. I was afraid he was going to beat Adam and was so fearful my husband would get in trouble with the law. I watched from the window wrapped in a blanket and saw Adam still laying in the bush, trying to extract himself. I could see he was scratched up and hurt, but didn't appear seriously injured. Henry emerged from the house holding Adam's cell phone and started shouting at Adam to give him his passcode. Adam started begging for mercy, pleading with Henry not to hurt him and not to call his wife, Kate. Henry got angry and told Adam to, Give me the freaking code, or you're going to suffer. With this, Adam quickly gave him the code, and Henry entered it into the phone. Henry then called Kate and told her who he was, and explained that he was standing here with her husband wearing no clothes, who he just caught having sex with his wife. After some additional back and forth and comforting talk, he gave Kate our address and ended the call. I then saw our next door neighbor walking over. He asked Henry if everything was all right. Henry told him no, but said he'd be okay. Henry then thanked him for calling him and explained he caught us in the act. Our neighbor said he knew something was up. When he saw a man sneaking around outside the house, he said at first he thought he was robbing the place until he saw me answer the door and let him in. The neighbor told Henry he just had to call him. Henry told the neighbor he was going to call the cops as he wanted to report the situation. Hearing this, Adam began crying and pleaded with Henry not to do so. At this point, he was still naked and had began shaking violently. I shouted down to Henry, asking him to please not call the cops, but he ignored us and called. They came within a few minutes. Henry and our neighbor met the officer out at the curb where they spoke for several minutes, pointing at the neighbor's house and then up to the office window. Next, they walked up to the bush where Adam was hunched over weeping. The officer asked Henry if he could retrieve his clothes, and Henry said he would do so. When I heard Henry open the door, 
I ran to the top of the steps, crying and telling him how sorry I was and how much I loved him. But he never looked up. He just gathered Adam's clothes and shoes off the floor and stairs and went back outside. The officer took the clothes from Henry and handed them to Adam, and he clumsily got dressed. The sight was humiliating. Adam was hyperventilating and still violently shaking at this point. I had never seen anyone do this and realized it was probably from a combination of nervous fear, shock, and from being cold as it was only about 55 degrees. I stood at the window while the officer questioned Adam, but they couldn't see me because of the screens we have on our windows. He told Adam to settle down and relax, which he eventually did. Adam said it was all his fault and he deserved it. He explained truthfully what happened and said he charged at Henry, as he just wanted to get out of there. The officer asked him if Henry acted defensively or offensively when he pushed him. Adam replied that it was defensively. I was relieved Adam didn't falsely accuse Henry. Soon a number of neighbors gathered out front. The neighbor who reported me to Henry was explaining to them what was going on. I was so embarrassed and just cried harder. Now back to the police officer and Adam, the officer asked him if he wanted to press charges. Adam said he didn't and said he just wanted to leave and promised to never bother our family again. After this, Adam's wife, Kate, pulled up out front. My husband walked out to greet her where they spoke for a minute or so. Adam ran over to her, crying and saying he was sorry, but she didn't even acknowledge him. The officer spoke to her and I could faintly hear her say she wanted Adam to stay away from her. The officer then told Adam to step back. He did took a step back and looked betrayed, and he started ugly crying. The officer spoke to Henry and Kate for a few minutes, then walked into the house to speak to me. He called up the stairs and asked if I could come down and talk with him. I said okay, but asked him to give me a minute so I could get dressed. The officer then took my statement. At the end of our conversation, he said that my husband requested I voluntarily leave the home. I told the officer I didn't want to, and that I needed to speak with my husband. He said he understood, but explained it would be best if I left, at least for tonight, so things could calm down. I cried so hard. He then asked if there was anyone I could call. I told him, yes, my parents. Coincidentally, shortly after I said this, I heard my mom's voice on the porch talking to Henry. When I saw her face, it broke me. I just said, Mom, I'm sorry, Mom, I really messed up. The officer explained to my mom that it would be best for me to stay with her for a few days, at least until things settled down. I then went upstairs with her to pack. She didn't say anything while packing, but I saw she was fuming. I knew she was angry, embarrassed, and really disappointed with me. When we came downstairs and walked outside, only the officer was there along with several neighbors who were still out on the sidewalk talking. The officer explained that Henry had gone to pick up the kids at school, that Henry would be taking them to practice and then out to eat. He said Henry asked that I close and lock the door and he, Henry, would call me in a few days to talk. When I got back to my parents' house, both my mom and dad scolded me for destroying my marriage. I just said I was sorry and explained that I was going to win back Henry's trust. My dad told me that was never going to happen and that I should start preparing for divorce. With this, I burst out crying and mom asked him why he'd say something like that. He just said, because it's true. For the next two days, I texted and called Henry, but he didn't respond. Then on Wednesday evening, he sent a text stating we could meet on Saturday morning at our house to discuss next steps. He also wrote in the text that he had already explained to our kids what happened, so they were fully aware. I couldn't believe he did this without me. I thought they must hate me now. In a separate text, Henry said he filed charges against Adam and secured a 30-day temporary restraining order. I hated hearing this, as I just wanted this nightmare to end. To make matters worse, the incident was written up in the police section of our local paper. While the paper didn't give names or our house number, it did give our street name and was written so it was obvious what happened. Add in people knew from gossip so everybody must have known it was about our family. Saturday came, and I was both excited and nervous to see Henry again. My dad and mom drove me and stayed out on the porch as Henry and I met inside. I told them they could leave, 
But Henry said he wanted them there as he didn't trust being alone with me. Seriously? I went in to hug him, and he just held up his hands, keeping me away. We sat down, and he handed me separation papers. I broke down crying and told him, No, please don't do this. I pleaded and again told him how sorry I was, and I loved him. Only him. He just said, No, you don't, and started explaining the papers like a machine on a mission. I continued begging, just to have a moment to talk to him about what happened, but he just kept explaining how the separation will work. He said I could move back in, but would be staying in the office. That was still just the way I left it. He then said he was splitting our bank accounts 50-50, and we would split the equity in the house if it ever sold, but explained he wanted me to surrender any claim to his 401k. He then went on and explained that starting next month, I would be required to contribute 35% of our living expenses, including the mortgage, insurances, utilities, car payments, food, etc. This would be about $2,300 per month. Since I didn't have a job, I would need to pay him from my half of the savings. He explained that all of this was clearly detailed in the separation agreement and that I needed to get a lawyer to review it. I told him I don't want to get a lawyer. I just wanted to talk to him about us. He calmly but firmly said, there's nothing to talk about and said he just wants to officially separate from me. Then he explained that the only time he will talk to me would be for matters pertaining to our kids, or when our kids are talking to both of us. He said anything else I say will be ignored. I cried and asked if he was seriously going to divorce me, and he said, right now, that's my plan. I told him I couldn't live without him, and I will fight with everything I had to keep him. He gave me a reaction I didn't expect. Thinking back, I can clearly see it printed in my mind. He just looked at me with disgust and started laughing loudly. With that, he yelled out to my parents to come in. He then called his parents on speakerphone and explained everything he just told me to both sets of parents. It was so cold. It was like a business meeting. All the while for me, it was torture. I just apologized to Henry and our parents and said I was going to fight to save my husband and family. This all went down this morning, and now I'm here in the office writing this post at 2 a.m., as I can't sleep. Talking to my sister earlier, she gave me great advice and said I might also want to share my story online to see if any readers might offer some additional suggestions that could be helpful. So here I am. What should I do? Have I broken my marriage beyond repair? Is there any chance of getting back the beautiful life I destroyed, or is it gone forever? All responses, even bad ones, are welcomed. Right now, I just feel like an outcast with no one to turn to. My sister has been great, though she too is disgusted with me. Thank you in advance for reading this and for any replies you send. Sophia Not only have you destroyed your marriage, you have forever changed the relationship you have with your children your parents, and everyone in the community. Something similar, though not as dramatic, happened to my sister 16 years ago. Her husband divorced her, and everyone in our small town still refers to her as the homewrecker. Good luck. Do you know how much danger you put your husband in by bringing this strange man into his home? In the heat of the moment, your lover could have seriously hurt Henry by knocking him down, or your lover could have been seriously hurt. Or worse, when he fell out of the window. Your husband could be facing prison time now, all because of you. You are and beyond awful. I was in your shoes seven years ago. I know you're not going to want to hear this, but the best thing to do is to divorce. My loving husband took me back, but our marriage was never the same. He never touched me again, and instead began a relationship with his now wife. He met her through the one-sided open marriage I offered him, we finally divorced two years ago. A lot has happened in my life since I last updated. I first want to thank everyone who responded to my original post. Reading all the responses helped keep me going even though many were very critical of my actions. I can say from experience that not every story has a happy ending. In fact, some endings are just terrible. 
Henry and I are now divorced. I tear up just typing those words and still can't believe it. It's just a nightmare. If you remember from my original post, my husband and I were back living together in our home, even though we were legally separated. Things were cold between us for the first month, but then he started to come around, talking to me more and even laughing and joking with me and the kids. I was feeling good about our progress and was confident we could still reconcile, but only if we kept on the path we were on. Then, out of the blue, four months into our separation, Henry said he wanted to talk with me alone without the kids. I thought this was going to be a discussion about us taking the next step towards reconciliation, but instead he told me he wanted a divorce. I was completely devastated. I know all wives, that did what I did, use that term a lot in these posts, but I can tell you I truly was. Henry explained that while he will always care deeply for me as the mother of his two beautiful children, the love, passion, and trust he had for me is gone. I tried everything to change his mind, but it was already made up. I broke down and we hugged, but I could tell it was not a hug of a husband and wife, it was more like two friends. Since we had been separated nearly four months and had already agreed to the division of assets and custody in the separation agreement, the divorce went quickly and was finalized in February of this year. Henry treated me fairly. He bought out my equity share in our home and even gave me an additional $10,000, as he wanted to make sure I was able to maintain a good home for our kids. Even though I had a nice sum of money from the divorce, it was not enough to buy a home, nor was it enough to live on for the rest of my life. So I ended up taking a job at a new donut franchise just down the street from our kids' school. I know the woman who owns the franchise, so I contacted her about working there, and she hired me on the spot. Contrary to what you might think, I love working there. The owner is very nice and understanding, my coworkers are awesome, and our customers are super friendly. I kind of wished I had gotten a job while I was married, as maybe things wouldn't have turned out like they have. How does the saying go, an idle mind is the devil's playground, or something like that? Oh well, I can't change the past. Buckle up for next part. As for Henry, a month after our divorce was final, he announced to his family and friends that he and Kate were officially a couple. Not only that, they were expecting a child in August. I ended up finding out through my kids, who were excited about having two new siblings, the new baby and Kate's daughter. This news absolutely destroyed me. I just couldn't believe Henry would do this and then not tell me about it himself. It's obvious Henry and Kate were seeing each other while we were separated. In fact, the gossip is that they started their relationship right after D-Day. We live in a no-fault state, so it doesn't matter anyway. Unlike Henry and I, Kate decided to divorce Adam right away. Since the house they were living in was gifted to her and they apparently had little savings, their divorce was final months before ours. As for Adam, it's a sad story. He was very broken up by the divorce, and on Halloween of last year, he was picked up for a DUI. Apparently, this was his second such violation. Kate used this to get full custody of their daughter, and now he only has supervised visitation, which occurs at Kate's parents' house as Henry and Kate don't want to see him. On top of that, Adam is deathly afraid of Henry. I learned this through gossip, but didn't need to. I remember D-Day and how it all went down. I think it's dirty and cruel for Kate to do this to her child's father, even though she may hate him. But I understand why she did what she did. Kate and her daughter are now living with Henry and my kids in my house. Of course, it's no longer my house, but I still think of it that way. This whole situation really depresses me, so I try not to think about it, but still do nearly every minute of the day. I try to convince myself that this whole thing with Kate is just a phase for Henry, just like I went through with Adam. Kate is pretty and young, she's 26, so she's like a new play toy for Henry. Since they were brought together under stressful circumstances, I don't think their love is genuine. I still hold hope that one day Henry and I will reunite, but I wish him and Kate the best. Last week, I was advised that my contact with Henry will be limited further, 
as he advised me that we will only be talking about our kids via email starting on Wednesday this week. Henry said Kate has been communicating with Adam this way, and he wants to do the same to me. Hearing this so bluntly broke me even further. I know Kate had to put him up to this, as he would never cut me off like that. As for me, I've recently been spending most of my time decorating my new apartment and making it a comfortable place for my kids. It's only got two bedrooms, so things are a little crowded, but we make it work. I wish I could go back and change the past, but I can't. So now I'm just moving forward one baby step at a time. That's where things are today with me. Thank you for listening to my story. That was Sophia's story. A story with series of choices with consequences, some light as feathers, others heavy as stones. Sophia's choice to cheat with Adam was one such stone. Well, a huge stone, sinking her into the depths of regret. In the end, sharing her story might give her breathing room and a sense of relief. What is your take on this? Is she fair in her comments about Kate? Let us know, down below. Before you go, gift the like button a cat, but don't mention it's feral. <laughs> Thank you for watching Royal AI. I appreciate you for staying all the way till the end. See you in the next one. Special gratitude goes to the YouTube channel. Find your alpha for covering OP's story in its original format. This episode is created differently for the Royal AI audience. His unique content with wise commentary is as entertaining as informative for the modern man and woman. Be sure to check his channel out.